Hi, in this video we're going to learn about generating prime numbers in Java. So a prime number is basically a number that is only divisible by itself and the number 1, right? So that's what we're seeing here on the Wikipedia page. A prime number is a natural number greater than 1 that can't be formed by multiplying two smaller natural numbers. A natural number greater than 1 that is not prime is called a composite number, right? So here in this uh, diagram here, you could see that um, the list of the first 12 numbers and whether they are prime or composite, right? Five is prime because you can only form the number five by multiplying. If you were going to form it by multiplying two numbers, the only numbers you could use are five and one, right? That's not true for six, though. Six, you can say two times three or three times two. Same with four, two times two, eight, right? There's different ways to compose the number eight uh, from smaller numbers. And so these are interesting to mathematicians and computer scientists alike. A lot of programming classes, especially undergraduate programming classes, will have students generating prime numbers using various different techniques. Um, so in this video, we will use one particular technique that I think is very easy to understand. Uh, and we will go on to generate an infinite stream of prime numbers. So I've taken the liberty to write this program already, and uh, it's less than 40 lines of code long, and I'm just going to walk through and explain it to you now. So let's start here with this private static Boolean method called isPrime. And it's really, there's only one piece that I think is difficult for uh, sort of a new programmer or uh, someone who's not great at math to understand, which is this condition right here, right? So if we were to change this condition to make it uh, easy to understand, we would just make it do this. We would say, start with the number, for any number that we want to try out, let's say the number, we pass in the number 10, start with the number 2 and go all the way up to, uh, but don't do not include the number 10 itself, so from 2 to 9, and just ask does 10 divide evenly with that number that you are uh, iterating through, right? And that's you can accomplish that using this kind of expression, n modulo i. The modulo operator will tell us um, what the remainder is after you divide uh, n by i, right? So if the remainder is 0, it means it divided evenly, right? So it's very easy to understand that if you wanted to see if 10 were prime, all you would have to do is go through the numbers between 2 and 10, uh, not inclusive, and ask, hey, does this number divide evenly? Or does 10 divide this number evenly? The next number? The next number? And if uh, for all of those numbers it's false, then you know that uh, you've fallen through the loop here and that number must be prime. Otherwise, you quickly break out and return false, right? So I think this is intuitive to understand that you go all the way up to the number n. Uh, it may even be intuitive to some to under quickly understand that you don't even need to go all the way up to n. You can just go up to n divided by 2, right? So, um, it, right? so if my number were 10, it should be obvious that I shouldn't have to go past 5 Right? That would be the biggest piece that I could break it into if I were to multiply two different numbers. Um, but the truth is, I don't even need to go to 5. I can go to math.sqrt of uh, 10, right? the square root of 10. To understand this uh, involves a little bit more familiarity with math. There's a fantastic Stack Overflow answer, um, and I will link that to the description in the description box that explains why you can get away with just going up to math.sqrt of n plus 1. Okay, so there's your primality test for any given number, a uh, very small program. And the only other piece of the program that we have is a method that returns a, a stream, an int stream, and um, this is how we're going to return an infinite stream. We're going to use this special method on stream called generate that takes a supplier, right? So we're going to generate an infinite stream. This is where this, the supplier is going to maintain the state and it's going to maintain the current number that we're looking at, right? So we're going to start with a value of 2 for the current number 
and each time your stream tries to get the next value, you're going to invoke this get method. It's going to ask, oh, if it's less than three, then just return that number, right? Um, one, two, and three are prime. And then uh, if you fall out of here, right, then you're going to go into this while loop, and it's going to say while the current number is not a prime, then increment the current number, right? And so it's just going to keep going until it finds the very next prime number. And then once it finds the very next prime number, it's going to return that value and map it to an int. And that's it. So now you can see we can invoke, let's say we called infinite primes with a limit of ten, the first 10 values and did a print, print line for each one of those. Um, it looks like we have a couple of um, warnings. Access can, yeah, that's fine. Uh, so let's, uh, let's run this method main. So here are the first, this is the first 10 prime numbers, right? And the beauty of having an infinite stream is I can just change the limit. Let's change the limit to 50. And there's the first 50 prime numbers, right? So this now is a fairly useful API that we've created. Um, and yeah, we did it in less than 50 lines of code. So there's a lot of programming websites out there that do coding challenges and sometimes they involve prime numbers and this could be a an interesting way for you to um, build your own prime library. There's other ways, right? Students usually learn different techniques like the sieve of Aristosthenes, um, but uh, not all of the techniques are as flexible as this one in allowing you to have an infinite stream. Okay, so that's it for this video. Please do make sure to rate, comment, and like and we will see you in the next one.